Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. So with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this. So going all the way back to July of around 2021, we've seen this article come out. The reason why I'm bringing it up again is because we still see community members talking about how Swift is going to kill Ripple or if Ripple is going to kill Swift. I want you all to understand that all those types of narratives around this, they're nonsense. Um, number one being Swift and Ripple are not really competing, right? Um, I think that this is one of the biggest misconceptions around the space that, oh, Ripple is trying to kill Swift or Swift is trying to, you know, kill Ripple um, and, you know, vice versa. The biggest thing here is that Ripple's main dream is to have Swift integrate Ripple technology. David Schwartz even said this as well. As we go back in time, this was with Swift Go. Now I was talking about how Swift was announcing this cross-border payments in seconds. Um, the thing is, right, is that the, the number one problem that I see with a lot of these major initiatives is it's still old architecture. For example, at the time, Ripple Labs dismissed that upgrade as just a marginal improvement on very old architecture. This was back in 2019 when Swift improved speeds to an average of 30 minutes for half of GPI payments with almost every transaction being completed in less than 24 hours. And now we have seconds, right? So this is killing Ripple, correct? Well, not exactly, right? Because you still don't have instant settlement. You can have faster payments all day long. In fact, it doesn't take much to have faster payments. We have faster payments right now. I said this in a recent video where I was talking about how you can make a transaction on PayPal or on um, you know Cash App, Venmo, even TransferWise. But the problem is, is that you still have a lot of problems tied to these. You also have a lot of fees tied to these. It is still extremely flawed. But that doesn't mean that Ripple is killing Swift or Swift is killing Ripple. The biggest problem that I see with Swift is that they need to innovate or they will die. Ripple has the upper hand here. Whether or not you want to believe that or not, it's totally fine. As we go all the way back to 2019, though, we do see Ripple. We are not replacing Swift. They're not. They're not trying to. We do see down here that this was from the head of global banking, which, by the way, was a previous um, employee at Swift. Uh, they were actually in charge of selling its global payments innovation GPI service. Um, and we do see a few quotes here. One, we are two different things. We are not replacing Swift, as Swift has its own value. And then we do see adding that banks could take advantage of both. This is complementary technology. That's also why David Schwartz said the, the number one goal or dream of Ripples would be to have Swift integrating RippleNet technology. And we do see down here a few other quotes as well. So this is uh, talking about that upgrade around uh, Swift yet again. But we do see GPI is bringing a value, although emphasizing that there are some changes or challenges the GPI does not address. Swift is improving dramatically the way that the payments happen today, but it's still about the messaging. You still need a message to another party. I don't call it settlement because this is not settlement. It's around the fact that I can send a message in a faster way and I can track it. This is an improvement from previously where it could take days. And we do see down here as well, there's a, there's a few other quotes within this I do like. This one down here is uh, very interesting as well. Today, trillions of dollars are tied up in pre-funded accounts around the world by banks in order to make sure that the exchange of value in the correspondent banking system is happening, but it's at a cost. Working capital for corporates is locked up. XRapid, which did get rebranded, is helping users to have fast and low-cost provision of liquidity when they need it without the obligation of tying up capital in advance. See, this is the number one thing around Swift. They won't be able to compete with Ripple if they wanted to, simply because they don't have an XRP type asset. Remember, Swift is still a closed network. It's not an open network like what Ripple is, right? Like if we look at XRP for an example, anyone can tie, tie into XRP. I can utilize XRP in any country. I can utilize XRP anywhere around the world, 24 seven, 365. With Swift, you can have sanctions. It's a closed system. And it's a centralized system, which is also another big problem. As we look at what Ripple has solved utilizing XRP and tapping into XRP's power, 
it's something like nothing else, right? Like that idea of pr the, the working capital, right? Freeing up working capital. That's huge for a lot of these enterprises, these corporates, um, you name it. And you don't get that. You don't get that with Swift. You will never get that with Swift. And also remember, XRP being a fully decentralized asset, you will never get that with Swift. Swift tried in the past to create an asset like XRP, but again, who, who's going to use it? It's not decentralized. It's controlled by Swift. It is not going to be beneficial. So what do you see down here? Um, we are obviously in an education phase. When talking with banks, we still have to ensure that they understand that using this product is not around keeping XRP on their balance sheets. That's very important for the banks to understand because they would otherwise have to report that to the regulators, she said, emphasizing that financial institutions do not hold XRP, but only use it only as a bridge currency. Again, another big thing here is, uh, yeah, XRP would be the bridge currency around on-demand liquidity. And I've always said, like, with on-demand liquidity, the, th the best thing about it is that it creates a floor model for XRP's price as well. Uh, meaning that the value of XRP will stabilize and there's really only one way it can go. And although, yes, we will still see fluctuations at a point where we do see mass adoption of crypto technology and XRP is moving, we'll say like percentages of the global, um, you know, global value moved daily. Um, that's going to be a very significant time in history, especially around XRP because that means that the price of XRP should be stabilized. Um, and with the network effects of retail and things like that, the price of XRP would rise significantly. But we're still years away from that. We don't know how long away that is, but hey, I'm waiting patiently for that. And then just down here, uh, they start talking a little bit about Facebook, which we all know that uh, Facebook did fail within this space as well, because again, nobody wants centralized entities uh, to be a part of this game. When we look at Ripple, like Ripple is still private technology. They are a private company, but XRP and the Ripple Net uh, network is fully open. It's fully open. You could still have Ripple Net, like Ripple could be sanctioned, but XRP can, which also is very beneficial for XRP itself and those that hold XRP. Outside of what Ripple Net is doing, or I should say what Ripple is doing with XRP on Ripple Net, XRP is still 100% decentralized, which is why it is the perfect asset to become a bridge currency. But also, I want to go back to uh, 2018 over here. So we do see Electronic Payments International making waves. Down here, Swift and Ripple race for payment domination. This is also very interesting because within this, we do see a few direct quotes. And we do see Swift versus Ripple. Swift is enhancing its network following consultations with banks and in response to blockchain-based payments platform Ripple, but will lack of interoperability mean there is only room for one? Again, when you have connections being created where you could, could have interoperability, meaning Swift plug and play into uh, Ripple technology through an API, it's a big game changer, right? Um, a lot of these major networks like Swift will most likely integrate crypto and DLT over the course of the next couple of years. We already know there's a ton of announcements from Swift utilizing crypto and wanting to utilize crypto for a while. Um, so this would be right on board with what we've been uh, mentioning around Quant as well, where you have interoperability solved and it's a key gateway to mass adoption of this type of technology. That's how I envision the future around Swift with Ripple. I think that these are very complementary technologies, so I don't really see a world where they are competing. But if they are, guess what? I do think that Ripple has the upper hand and Ripple will stomp out Swift simply because of their business model. Um, and we also do see a few other quotes down here as well, which is RippleNet, a distributed ledger network for exchange of cross-border payments, is beginning to gain traction as the alternative to the traditional model. Uh, they do talk a little bit more about it down here. Um, there's also a few other uh, quotes in here that's pretty interesting, which is Ripple and Swift share a common goal, helping banks move money value payments around the world. Um, however, while Swift depends on a correspondent banking system to process payments, Ripple is enabling frictionless instant payments today using its enterprise blockchain technology and the XRP digital asset. Ripple's solution includes two-way messaging, instant settlement, and end-to-end -end visibility over the journey and fees of the payment in addition Ripple had a unique product suit, including XRapid, uh, which helps RippleNet members source on-demand liquidity for cross-border payments using XRP, the spokesperson said. RippleNet is beginning to gain traction as the alternative to the traditional model. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, this is something that I've been focused on for so long. Like, it, as we do look at this, 
I don't really think that, you know, Ripple is trying to kill Swift. I think that it will gradually happen if Swift doesn't integrate this type of technology. We're already seeing them becoming a dominant force around the world. So although like they're not focused on killing Swift, it's it's the ego behind some of these private players like Swift that don't want to um, say, hey, let, let's collaborate. Let's integrate RippleNet onto our system to utilize this type of technology because they don't want to be like a lot of these players like Swift are ones that are focused on the traditional world. They are extremely greedy. Um, it's it's one of the biggest problems. Right. And we even do see down here. So, indicative of the challenge, Ripple poses to Swift. Ripple held a parallel event to coincide with Swift's CBOS conference in Toronto in October of 2017. In reply to Ripple's claims that Swift's correspondent banking model is not as efficient as RippleNet, a source close to Swift says Swift's correspondent banking model is used by thousands of institutions globally. So, they're still kind of reliant on the idea that like Swift is the dominant force right now because they still have 11,000 major institutions tied to the network. But the problem is, is like what happens when, you know, all of these major banks are starting to push away from Swift and utilizing crypto and utilizing RippleNet? Because we already know that back in the back in the day, because this was from 2020, we know that 38 percent of the world's largest 100 banks, so 38 of them, were utilizing Ripple technology or at least testing it, integrating or even invest in it. So what's going to happen when we start to see this this force continue to rise and gain a lot more traction? Because so far, Ripple, going all the way back to 2022, they still had about 300 financial institutions signed up um, and utilizing RippleNet. What about the day when, you know, we do see hundreds of banks and institutions coming over to Ripple? Because I do believe that we will see a wave of adoption at some point in time that is going to be very large. So the question is like, what's, what's Swift going to do then? And we even do see down here, um, an individual from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago said that the Fed has chosen not to endorse any particular platform system or technology. My own personal feeling is that the more con uh, competition there is in domestic and cross-border payments, the better for the market and for businesses and consumers everywhere. I expect the best technologies will thrive in the new improved payments environment. And yeah, like as we do look at what's happening, innovation. These banks will have to either innovate or they will die. And that goes for the same major entities tied to it, like Swift. These networks need to innovate. Because even if we go all the way back to uh, 2018, th this is a well-known uh, PDF file within this space. I'm sure that you guys are aware that this has been around forever. Um, this has been a major thing to focus on for so long. The, the difference between RippleNet and Swift GPI, the inefficiencies with Swift, versus the efficiencies with Ripple. Um, there is, you can't even compare the two, right? You, you really can't. We already know that Ripple is the, the significant force to be reckoned with around cross-border payments. The thing to me is, is that at a time where it's so clear that crypto is the future, and at a time where we have incredible case studies around Ripple technology that is proven to change the overall game for payments and payment technology, there is not a doubt in my mind that the future is going to be crypto and crypto uh, companies and crypto driven networks and payment networks like RippleNet. And I think that this quote here from Monica Long kind of sums everything up on what's happening right now around crypto. I do think that 2023 kind of changed the way most of these major institutions and banking giants are starting to think. Um, I think that they are they are now aware of what's happening around this type of technology and the doors that it is opening. I think that a lot of them are also realizing that the traditional players of yesterday, like Swift, for an example, you know, their days are kind of numbered if they don't innovate. And listen closely to this. It's really interesting to look backward. We started this journey of working with financial institutions in 2015. We would walk into banks. The original pitch was this idea of you can create an account on a public blockchain called XRP Ledger. It has a built-in decentralized exchange. This would be a very efficient way for you to conduct cross-border payments, provide you a lot more transparency. This was right after the Mt. Gox collapse mm -hmm. and Silk Road bust. You could guess that the banks generally slammed the doors in our faces. The timing was off. Since then, over the years, crypto is a market expanded a lot. There's been a much warmer embrace across the institutional world. The past couple years have been a real tipping point for mm. institutional DeFi, where you see even the biggest banks embracing this technology as the future, and they have to adapt or die. It's really interesting.
And, you know, that quote, it's 100% true. Like, they have to adapt or they will die. See, that's why I say, like, Ripple is in the Ripple is in the driver's seat, right? Swift is just a passenger. If Swift wants to continue on course with this journey, they will have no choice but to integrate crypto-driven solutions within their platform. It would be in their best interest to collaborate with Ripple. Again, Ripple is not here to replace them. Ripple is not here to kill them. It is in Swift's best interest to collaborate, though. Because if they don't, I do significantly believe that they will lose a large percentage of market dominance over the course of the next couple years. And it's already happening. Outside of the U.S., Ripple continues to gain traction. Private initiatives continue to become the norm. And it's only going to be like that from here on out. This is going to be a trend that continues. And I think it's because of the efficiencies tied to this type of technology. I think it's because of what's being achieved through this type of technology. And it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time until the dominoes start falling. And I really do think that people need to, to wake up and, and realize this big, this big moment is coming. You know, it's, it, we just have to be patient. And I get it, right? Waiting sucks. But it, it's exactly what we need to do. We just need to be patient, relax, and, you know, don't make any impulsive decisions. And just accumulate. Accumulate when we need to. Accumulate when we want to and are able to. And uh, just sit tight because it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a journey. It's going to be a fun journey. It's going to be very exciting at times. It's going to be scary at times. But this is a journey that you want to be on. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, to notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Uh, so it's up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.